Hello, my dear. I'm Dr. Alam Musbah, professor of obstetrics and gynecology, faculty of medicine, Mansoura University. Today, let us try to answer some multiple choice question in obstetrics. Okay, choose the one best response. The first question: Polyhydramnus can be diagnosed when amniotic fluid index is. Polyhydramnus can be diagnosed when amniotic fluid index is A. 25 or more B. 1 to 5 C. 5 to 10 D. 10 to 15 E. 15 to 20 Okay So The polyhydramnus can be diagnosed when amniotic fluid index is 25 or more and this is done by ultrasound as you all know that we we have the sum of the maximum vertical diameter of each four quadrant and if the sum reach 25 or more we diagnose polyhedra Okay, let's go to the next. The diameter of the fetal head that distends the vulva, if the head is allowed to, to extend before crowning, is the diameter of the fetal head that distends the vulva, if the head is allowed to extend before crowning, is A. Occipital frontal diameter, B. Suboccipital pragmatic diameter, C. Suboccipital frontal diameter, D. Mental vertical diameter, D. Submental pragmatic diameter. Of course, if we allow the head to descend, a while no crowning happened, the diameter could be the occipital frontal diameter, which is 11.5 centimeter. Of course, we do region maneuver to avoid this by applying pressure on the perineum, the under surface of the face and the frontal bone, and the other hand applied over the occiput, pushing it slightly downward. This maneuver using both hands is called region or modified region maneuver. Why we are using this maneuver? This maneuver is done to allow the distension of the head slowly. The progress will be slowly, so the maximum diameter that descends the vulva would be the suboccipital pragmatic. So after crowning, we do, or at the crowning, we do the regime maneuver. But if we allow the head to extend early and suddenly, and during contraction, this may cause vulval tear or perineal tear due to larger diameter extending the vulva, which is occipital frontal diameter, which is 11.5 centimeter. Okay? So, the answer is occipital frontal diameter. The most common cause of miscarriage in the first trimester is the most common cause of miscarriage in the first trimester is A. Antiphospholipid antibody syndrome B. Fusion anomalies of the uterus C. Incompetent internal os D. Toxoplasma gondii infection E. Chromosomal abnormalities Of course, we know that the most common cause of miscarriage in the first trimester is chromosomal abnormalities of the zygote. Okay? Okay. So, let us go to the next question. Oligohydramnus 
that is diagnosed at 26 gestational weeks should direct the attention to the possibility of oligohydramnus that is diagnosed at 26 gestational weeks should direct the attention to the possibility of A. Anencephaly B. Diabetes mellitus in the mother C. Renal agenesis in the fetus D. Open spina bifida E. Ventricular septal defect So what is the first one response? Of course, oligohydramnus that occur early, we, we, we should put in our mind that there is a possibility of congenital anomaly. But which congenital anomaly? The renal agenesis in the fetus. This is the first one response. Okay? okay. Why? Because all of us know that part of the component of the amniotic fluid is formed by the urine coming from the fetus. So if there is renal agenesis or obstruction of the urethra of the fetus, this amniotic fluid will decrease because there is no fetal urine due to the problem present in the fetus, like renal agenesis or stool in urethra. Okay, so the best one response to this question is renal agenesis in the fetus. Okay, next, second trimester screening for Down syndrome uses. Second trimester screening for Down syndrome uses. A, blood level of HCG, alpha fetoprotein, Estriol and inhibin A. B. Blood level of HCG and pregnancy associated plasma protein and nuchal translucency. C. Blood level of HCG, alpha fetal protein and pregnancy associated plasma. D. Chordosynthesis. E. Amniocentesis. So, we are talking here about screening in second trimester. So, Best one response here is A, blood level of HCG, alpha fetoprotein, estriol, and inhibin A. Okay, let us go to the next. The following is considered effect of pregnancy on diabetes mellitus. The following is considered effect of pregnancy on diabetes mellitus. A. Incidence of maternal hypoglycemia increased. B. Easy and better control of diabetes. C. The required dose of insulin increased. D. Insulin receptor resistance decreased. E. Complication of diabetes mellitus decreased. So please choose the one best response. The one best response here is the required dose of insulin increased, as we know, as the pregnancy go on from first to second to third trimester. Usually, the required insulin dose is increased to control diabetes. Okay. So. The answer is C, the required dose of insulin increased. Let us go to the next, please. Ectopic pregnancy can be managed by mesotrexate 1. Ectopic pregnancy can be managed by mesotrexate 1. A, HCG level less than 2000 milli international unit per milli and gestational sac less than 3 centimeter. B, HCG more than 6,000 milli international unit per milli and gestation sac more than 4 cm. C, HCG is sharply increasing by follow-up. D, the mother is hemodynamically unstable. E, there is evident intraperitoneal hemorrhage. So, please choose 
the one first response. The one first response here is A. HCG less than 2000 milliliter national unit per, per milli and gestational sac is less than 3 centimeter. Okay? okay. So, what about the next question? Which is, which of the following is a maternal risk factor for shoulder distortion? Which of the following is a maternal risk factor for shoulder distortion? A. Nulliparity B. Diabetes mellitus C. Thin age pregnancy D. Chronic hypertension E. Chronic renal disease Please choose the one first response. Here the answer is B. Diabetes mellitus As all of us know Diabetes is associated with macrosomic baby and the broad shoulder, the position of the fat, the subcutaneous tissue. So, this changes in the body of the fetus may cause shoulder distortion. In cases with diabetes mellitus with pregnancy, especially the uncontrolled one. Okay, let us go to the next. The plane of the pelvis at which internal rotation occurred is the plane of the pelvis at which internal rotation occurs is A. Plane of the outlet B. Plane of the least pelvic dimension C. Plane of the greatest pelvic dimension D. Plane of the anatomical outlet E. Plane of obstetric outlet. Please choose the one first response. The one first response here is the plane of greatest pelvic dimension. Okay. okay. So let us go to the next with the following question. The engaging diameter in phase presentation is the engaging diameter in phase presentation is a mental vertical diameter, B submental vertical diameter, C submental pragmatic diameter, D suboccipital pragmatic diameter, E occipital frontal diameter. Please choose the one first response. The one first response here is submental pragmatic diameter, which is 9.5 centimeter. Okay, this is the last question. I hope it, it is beneficial for you. And I want to remember you about my box published on Amazon, textbook of aesthetic, textbook of gynecology, contraception handbook, and the multiple choice question in obstetrics, gynecology, and the contraception. You can go to the Amazon at this link to find this box. Okay, also the other link here is the link of my YouTube channel. You can find many lectures and many quizzes and you can have some benefit from other important videos. Also, this is another scientific site belongs to me. Thank you everybody.